Today you'll learn an easy eight step workflow for editing beautiful golden hour photos in Lightroom. So let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and on this channel we love to talk about photography, photo editing, and all of that good stuff. So if that sounds like something that you would be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Now today we're going to talk all about a very easy workflow that you can use and apply into your own work for editing golden hour photos. This technique will quickly take your image from a boring raw file to something that has a nice stylized warm sunset look to it. So let's hop into Lightroom and start discussing each step in this workflow. So once you open your image in Lightroom, you obviously have your raw file that you now have to edit. And this can be kind of an intimidating part to start with because you're like, man, where do I take this photo? What do I do with it? Luckily, by breaking each step down, it becomes pretty straightforward and really easy to take a photo from square one to the final product that you're imagining in your head. For the first step, you of course need to adjust the exposure. And you can do that with all of your options here within the basics panel. To access all of these tools, just make sure that you're in the developed tab of Lightroom and then we'll go and first adjust the exposure. Just by increasing that exposure I'll make everything a little bit brighter in my photo and then I'll go and adjust the highlight shadows whites and blacks all individually. So by just decreasing those highlights a little bit so I get more detail in the sky I'll bring up those shadows so then I can also see more detail in my subject in the trees and all that kind of stuff. Rather than bringing my whites down as well because then it kind of looks a little bit flat I'm just going to leave them as is or maybe drag them up just a touch. And then for my blacks, I'm gonna add back a little bit of contrast by dragging that down as well. Each image requires something a little bit different, especially depending on the lighting conditions or your camera settings. So just play around with each of these sliders and see what works best for your photo. So now with step one complete, let's move on to step number two, which is adjusting the white balance. And for sunset photos, white balance is an amazing way to really enhance that golden hour light. In this case, we'll increase the temperature to the more warm color like so. To further enhance this look, we can adjust the tint and add just a little bit of purple into the image as well. And that can further accentuate that nice golden hour color. As for step three, we'll now move to our tone curve. And here you can do your more stylized exposure adjustments to your image. You can use the point curve here by clicking on your curve to drag up or down to darken. However, I find that the region curve is a little bit easier for most people since you can just drag the different sliders to target specific areas within your tone curve. So starting with the highlights, I'll play around with this to see what looks best. In this case, I'll just drag it down a little bit more to get a little more detail in that sky. As for the lights, I'll play around with that as well. And I'll just drag that up a touch like so just so things don't look too flat in the background. And then I'll do the exact same thing with darks, play around with that. I'll drag up my darks, but then I'll bring down my shadows just a touch so I don't lose out on that contrast. Next, you can also adjust different color ranges from red, green, and blue, aka RGB. The way this works is that, for example, in our red channel, if I drag up, it's gonna add red to our image. If I drag down, it adds the opposite color of red, which is cyan, to our image. The same thing goes for our greens, which is green and magenta, our blues, which is blue and yellow. In this case, I just wanna add a little bit of red to my highlights without going too crazy with it. So I'll click in the highlight range of my tone curve like so, and then just click and drag up to add a little bit of red. And then I'll go to my mid tones here and drag down just to balance things out. So my entire photo doesn't look too overwhelmingly red. You can also go and experiment with the blue channel because you can add a little bit of yellow into there as well as blue, which is both really natural colors that you often see in sunset photos, but it just depends on your image. In this case, I don't think I'm gonna make any adjustments and I'm happy with my red channel adjustments and my region curve adjustment. So turning that on and off, that completes our step number three in our edit. Going into step number four, we're gonna go and adjust the HSL, which is the hue, saturation, and luminance of the photo. The hue adjustment changes how a certain color looks. So for example, changing the color of the sky, I can make it look more teal, or I can make it look more purple, depending on what I'm going for. As for saturation, once again, focusing on the sky, I can make it look 
a lot more rich in color, or I can make it look a little more gray and flat. As for luminance, that's going to dictate how bright a certain color range is. So adding luminance, notice how the sky becomes brighter while dragging it down, decreasing luminance makes it darker. By going through each of these options, you can really make a cool stylized look to your sunset photos. I like to usually start in the hue option and you can manually go through all these sliders. However, there's a different way I like to go about things that's a little bit faster. By clicking on this option right here, you can now click anywhere on your image to sample a color and adjust it accordingly. Since we have our hue option selected, that's what we'll be adjusting in this case. So clicking on my sky to sample a color, I can now drag up or down to adjust the hue value of that sampled color, aka my sky in this case. So I'll just drag this down a little bit so I get a slightly teal color like so. Next, I'll go and click on the yellows in my image right down here, and I can once again drag up or down. And in this case, I kind of like that more orange color, so orangey red in that case actually. And something like this looks good to me. Then you can go and further sample other colors in your image as well. With all of your hue adjustments made, I'll go to my saturation. Once again, click on that sample option just because it makes life so easy. And then what I like to do for my sky actually is I'll increase the saturation and then I'll decrease the luminance later on. And I think it gives a really cool look. So increasing that saturation for now. And as for the yellow area, I'm pretty happy with how it everything is looking, so I'll leave that as is. Going over to my luminance option, I'll once again click on that sample, select my sky, and by dragging that down, it kind of adds a cool look, or you can make it a little bit brighter as well. And things are looking pretty good to me right there. In this case, my sky actually looks a little bit too saturated, so I'll just drag that down slightly like so. And now things are looking a little bit more balanced and good to me. The HSL adjustment works really well for creating stylized looks to your colors and works as a great and fast way to quickly stylize your entire photo with just a few sliders. So turning that adjustment on and off, you can see the very notable difference that that made and that completes step four. Moving down to our color grading adjustment, this is our step five for the workflow. And if you're unfamiliar with this tool, I highly suggest you going and checking out my previous tutorial all about how the color grading adjustment works. I share a whole bunch of awesome tips in there that you won't wanna miss out on. You can find that via the link in the description below. In a nutshell, the color grading adjustment allows you to add specific color hues to your highlights, midtones, or shadows, depending on which color wheel you adjust. By clicking anywhere on the color wheel, you can sample a specific color and notice how it adds that into my image. In terms of sunset, that means we'll want to target more reds, to yellows within our color range because those are the types of hues that you typically see in a sunset. So starting with my midtones, I'll just go and sample a middle orange color, something like this. And if I hold the shift key, I can increase the saturation as need be. For this example, I don't really want it to be too saturated, but I just want a little subtle look like this. So that looks pretty good to me. Next, I can go to my shadows and then I'll do the same thing. I'll play around, see if the yellow looks better or if the darker orangey red. And in this case, I kind of like the darker orange color here. And once again, I just want that to be very subtle. So just a little bit of saturation and keeping it near the center. Lastly, for my highlights, I can go and see which option works best here. And in this case, I want more of a yellow because that's gonna show up in my sky. And that looks really nice there. I can play around with the saturation, see which looks okay. And in this case, kind of a middle yellow saturation looks good for this image. Lastly, you can go to your blending and your balance slider, and this will help to blend all three of these color hues into your image a little bit better. So what I like to do is just move the blending option from one side to the other and see what kind of options it gives me. In this case, I like it a little bit more in this direction because it adds a bit more blue and color to the sky. And then as for balance, I'll do the same thing, drag it one direction, drag it the other direction and kind of see and compare what kind of options it gives me. But for this photo, I'll just increase the balance just a little bit like so. Turning that color grading adjustment on and off, you can see how much further that has stylized our image and made that sunset look to our photo. And now our image is really coming along. Now going into step six, you can add your sharpening and your lens correction adjustments as necessary. What I usually like to do is just increase my sharpening a slightest amount from the default values, and then I'll increase the luminance to 
10, which just helps to reduce any of the noise that is in my photo without making things look too soft and weird. With the lens corrections, I'll click off both of these options to remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections, which gets rid of any of the weird distortion or lens vignetting from your photo. Turning that on and off, it does make a pretty nice difference to get rid of that vignetting and gives a more realistic look to our image as if you're actually there because your eyeballs don't have vignettes. For our final option within Lightroom, step number seven of eight, we're gonna go to our calibration adjustment. And here you can change the hue and saturation of specific color ranges to get quite interesting effects for your colors. Since red is the dominant color in this image, I'll just play around with the red slider here to kind of see what options it gives me. In this case, I'll just increase the hue just a little, and then you can play around with the saturation as needed. It's also worthwhile to play around with your other color channels because you never know which ones are gonna work out the best while you're editing a photo. So with all of our image adjustments complete, our final step, step eight, is to export our image. But before we do that, let's first compare the before and after. Looking at our original raw photo to our new edit, you can see how much more sunsetty and vibey this other option looks compared to our original image. Using just a few simple adjustments in Lightroom, we're really able to transform this photo and add a cool professional stylized look in a relatively short amount of time. And now for our final step, it's time to export our image. And we'll go up here to file and down here to export to open our export options. Now there is a lot to talk about within this export panel and it depends what types of things you're wanting to use your photo for after you export it. If you want to learn all the best export settings for print, web, social media, all that kind of stuff, I'll share an article that I wrote on bewillcreative.com all about the best export settings from Lightroom that you can find down in the description below. For this image, I'll just keep things really simple. I'll set my folder to desktop. I'll rename my file to the exact same file name it started with, my image format to JPEG, my quality at 100%, and my resolution to 250, so it stays nice and sharp. From there, I'll click export, and our job is complete. So in this eight step workflow, you can take a raw image all the way to a beautiful edit in no time using a very simple workflow that you don't even need selective adjustments for. This is a technique that I love to use for all of my sunset images and I think that you would really enjoy it as well. So if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. If you're wanting to learn more about the color balance tool or the best export settings in Lightroom, once again, remember to hit the links down in the description below sharing more information about those two things. Anyways, guys, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com, and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.